The ATV-2 uh, departed from the International Space Station at 9.46 a.m. Within days of the end of the Johannes Kepler mission, with its graceful retreat from the International Space Station, its fiery demise burning up over the South Pacific, and with flight engineers and managers celebrating in the control rooms, the ATV program moved into a new phase. All eyes turned towards Bremen and the EADS Astrium facility with the next ATV, the Eduardo Amaldi, in final stages of preparation before being shipped to French Guiana. Europe's space freighter and servicing vehicle has, in its first two missions, amply demonstrated Europe's mastery of the techniques of automated rendezvous, technologies developed for the ATV that make it a precursor. Docking in orbit will always be, uh, let's say, a technology which will be very important, in particular if we think about stations which are unmanned, autonomous docking is absolutely key. European derivatives of the vehicle, such as the ARV, capable of returning cargo from the ISS, have today been put on hold. But the European Space Agency is discussing other possibilities in a framework of international cooperation. One avenue is to contribute ATV modules and technology to the MPCV, the multi-purpose crew vehicle envisaged by NASA as a manned spaceship allowing astronauts to go beyond the space station to the moon and perhaps even further. The in-orbit assembly of very large structures impossible to launch in one piece is another domain where Europe's experience gained with its extremely versatile space tug could be of great value. Systems have also been proposed in the past and are currently being developed for spacecraft capable of refueling satellites which have nearly exhausted their fuel and which would otherwise be decommissioned. Also envisaged are rescue missions to safely deorbit satellites. Such scenarios would see a space tug rendezvous with a satellite to then propel it towards a safe and destructive re-entry into the atmosphere. There is a lot of intelligence in an ATV with more than one million lines of code in its software. In conjunction with many other partners, ESA has been studying the use of robotic artificial intelligence in spacecraft capable like the ATV of fulfilling complex missions with very little or no human intervention. One application could be satellites flying in formation, working intelligently together to accomplish the objectives of a larger satellite, orbiting either as a cluster with precise station keeping or aligned on the same orbital path. And anything goes wrong, the, uh, in the formation some satellites can ask help from the others without the ground control actually inter interfering or helping anything so they can cooperate. Mm -hmm. Developing such space robots in particular for missions operating in unknown environments is extremely complex. Programming foresight for instance into a robot, its ability to understand alone what can happen next in certain situations is fundamental. But despite all these efforts for robotic applications, human intervention probably cannot be fully replaced and may well be mandatory depending on a mission's objectives. Drawing from the ATV program, these future missions with a high degree of automation and onboard intelligence are not so far away. For the present though, the pressure is to get the Eduardo Amaldi ready for its mission scheduled in the early spring next year.